This APC parse strip was removed from my workplace, and it was about to be thrown out, as I was told that it stopped working. So instead of uh, ending up in the trash, it ended up here on my bench. And indeed, it does not work. So I can show you right here. And I'm connecting the live to the live output here. And I, let me just put it here. This one seems to be tighter. And uh, as you can see that uh, the circuit is open regardless of the power switch position. And by pressing the reset button, nothing seems to happen. So it's uh, time to open it up and uh, take a look at uh, what is inside. Actually, just out of uh, curiosity, I did a quick search on this APC surge arrest power strip and some recall information showed up in the uh, search result. So here's the page on the US Consumer Product Safety Commission's website and the hazard listed here was that uh, the surge pro uh, protector can overheat, smoke, and melt, posting fire hazard. And it appeared it was recalled nearly five years ago, in 2013. I wondered why it did not get removed from the company premise after the recall. Perhaps this type of equipment was exempt from record keeping, as they are considered consumables. Anyway, it was really a shame, as a power protector was supposed to be protect the connected devices and not to add to the potential hazardous conditions. And uh, power protection was also supposed to be APC's core business as well. The model number for this APC I have here is uh, NET7, so it is definitely among the recalled units. Now, I'm more interested to see what could have caused the failure. And uh, it seems to be pretty straightforward to open this unit up, so I'm just going to do that off camera and uh, I will show you what is uh, inside once I remove all these screws. So now I have all the screws removed, let's uh, open it up and uh, take a look. Oh my goodness! So indeed, this one uh, has failed and you can see the charred mark here. So it was quite clear that something went horribly wrong and uh, this device either overheated or something happened and uh, the high current caused the solder to melt and it became disconnected. So that's what caused the, uh, the, the sim symptom that we were not able to get the live uh, rail and uh, the plug to be connected. But this probably also saved the device from further uh, destruction and otherwise we could potentially see a fire breaking out. And uh, so this was, I guess, one of the reasons this particular unit was recalled. Let me uh, remove this board so we can take a clear look at what is on this circuit board and figure out what might have been the cause. And now I do see that we have a fuse here. I'm wondering if the fuse actually was blown. Uh, let me check it out. Let's uh, get a meter here. And the fuse. Nope, the fuse is still intact. That is a very interesting, as I would have expected that uh, the fuse was the first one to go when this high energy uh, event happened, but clearly that was not the case. Had the fuse been blown, I guess it would have uh, uh, made it safer, and uh, probably that was one of the reasons this, again, this unit was uh, recalled. And just by the look of uh, this uh, circuit board, there really isn't too much to it. We have a big capacitor here, followed by some uh, common mode chokes, presumably. And then we have these uh, mobs here. And they are typically arranged between live and neutral, live and uh, uh, earth. And uh, to basically uh, absorb the energy when you have a spike in your uh, mains waveform. And uh, we do have some uh, circuitry here, and I'm interested to take a look to see what that circuitry does. So the only way to find out is to trace out the, uh, the circuit here, and I'll be back in a moment. And after I removed the board, I managed to uh, trace out the section of the circuitry. 
uh, for this two transistor uh, area here. And uh, here is the circuit I get. Now, in order to do the trace, I had to desolder some of the MOVs and uh, some of the uh, diodes so I can actually see the, uh, the boards more clearly. Of course, I could just clean it up, but uh, uh, this is uh, easier for me to do. And uh, so here's the circuit I got. It might not be 100% accurate, but I think for what we're doing, it is good enough here. And if you do notice if there's any discrepancy, please uh, leave a comment and let me know. And now you can see here's a circuit. It becomes clear to me uh, after I trace this out is that this circuit actually doesn't do too much in terms of uh, protection. It basically just to drive the uh, indicators. And uh, so in normal operation, we have this uh, resist resistors and uh, a diode here. So we have this positive uh, voltage that uh, turns on this uh, T3, which is your 2N222, this transistor. And uh, that's the, uh, the red LED is shunted. So the red L the green LED uh, is lit. That indicates normal operation. So in case of a fault, uh, we have this uh, uh, this resistive divider formed by the uh, the PDC fuse and our MOV, and this uh, voltage would start to rise. And then we would uh, uh, turn on the Starlington transistor. So all these resistors are actually very very high value. Uh, that's why uh, the, the current here is very slow uh, small. Sorry. So that's why we need this uh, Darlington transistor. But anyway, so once this Darlington transistor is turned on, it actually shunted the base uh, to the emitter for this uh, uh, transistor that's driving the, uh, the uh, green LED. And when that happens, this basically tur gets turned off. So this, the current, instead of going through the transistor, it would go through the green LED and the red LED. So I believe in this fault condition that both the green LED and the red LED would be lit. So this is actually the simple circuitry. And inside we do have, in terms of uh, uh, protection fuses, we, we do have a, quite a few resettable fuses. And we have this uh, uh, main fuse that is in series with the uh, with one of the resettable fuses that uh, leads the, uh, the live wire to the uh, sockets. So now I think I know what happened to this uh, PCB of the surge protector. And at least from what I can see here, um, somebody probably connected a very uh, heavy load to the socket and, uh, or simply just accidentally shorted it out. So in the meantime, very high current flows through the circuit. And uh, in theory, one of the fuses, either the resettable fuse or the actual main fuse, should have blown or reacted, but it didn't. So in this case, the trace actually became the fuse, and it was not designed to handle the amount of uh, current flowing through. So it melted, and at the same time, it damaged the PCB. So that's what those uh, black things you saw on the, uh, the case itself. So those are all from the PCB material, and not from any of the components here. So and uh, that did help the situation because once the uh, uh, circuit has been burned, uh, the connection actually became disconnected. So there's no current flowing through anymore, and uh, so the whole reaction stopped. And uh, had it uh, been, uh, you know, the, the trace been a little bit more robust, I would have thought the, uh, the main fuse would have blown. But uh, maybe there's some other design uh, flaw here, and uh, so that's called what caused the, uh, the recall of this uh, particular model. And that's pretty much all I wanted to cover for this video. I do want you to go check your power strips in your house to make sure that at least you don't have this very model, because uh, this is being recalled. And also, it might be a good idea to check other power strips to make sure that uh, they are not on manufacturer's uh, recall list, as uh, having a faulty power strip or power protection uh, unit in your house it just give you a false uh, sense of uh, security and you really should make sure that uh, those things are working as designed. So I hope you liked the video. If you liked the video and learned something new, please give it a big thumbs up and remember to subscribe and share. I will catch up to you next time.